everybody. Thank you so much for being here. Um, I'm here to talk about um, a research study that I did and some of the things that I found out I find extremely important. Uh, when I was a master's uh, student at Lesley University studying intercultural relations, I had this wonderful opportunity to do a in-depth research study on a community and I chose the indie game developers of the Boston area and uh, I did uh, what's called an ethnography and uh, I found out some things that were um, very interesting and very troubling about the game development industry here that I feel is very important to show to you guys. I'm sure even if you're not in game development, um, you'd still learn a lot if you're in the software industry. So to start, I'd like to talk to you guys about what an ethnography is, so you know what I'm talking about. Uh, an ethnography is a qualitative research study of a community where you're trying to find out what makes that community work. What makes them tick? Why are they um, interested in doing what they do? And I chose indies because I love video games. And to be completely honest with you, I was seeing myself as sort of like halfway in the community already. Being someone who already had ideas and had designs in her mind, but didn't know where to go with it. But I just wanted to see what the community was made up of and see some of the issues they face so that I could fully understand it. Um, to be a bit more clear about what qualitative research is, it's not like statistics and surveys and graphs and numbers. It is in fact completely the opposite, it is words. Um, basically, I interviewed people, I went to events and observed people, I um, had little conversations and I jotted notes about them, and I journaled a lot. And as you can see already, this is a very personal study. This means that I'm not just studying um, the indie community here. I'm also studying myself in that community. And that's why issues of diversity showed up. And I'm going to show you my life. Next slide. Baby pictures. <laughs> my two grandfathers and my two grandmothers holding what looks like an alien child <laughs> is actually me. Um, I wanted to show you this because, as you can see, I come from a multicultural family. I come from a multicultural Muslim family, if you can't tell from that little beautiful little thing in the background. Um, being a Muslim, being, you know, presenting as female, um, being who I am basically uh, made it a little bit difficult for me to be in the room with Indy sometimes. And I want you guys to all understand that because uh, also being queer as well was very difficult sometimes. Being someone who's lived in different countries. Um, I lived in Saudi Arabia growing up, so I've in a pretty conservative environment. So I'm sure you can all understand from what you know about the software and game development industry, someone like me really, really sticks out. Um, and um, so I'll tell you why in the next slide. During my observations, when I went to events such as Boston Unity Group, Women in Games, Boston Postmortem, I noticed, number one, of course, being white and being a man is the norm. That is definitely why I stuck out, but I also realized that since there were so many of them, there must have been so many other people like me or who didn't look like me who also felt kind of scared walking in. Um, another thing I, uh, I noticed is that most events occurred in places like bars and lounges, uh, which is very comfortable for the, the white male indie. Is it comfortable for a Muslim woman who doesn't drink? Is it comfortable for even a white male who doesn't drink? I don't know. But I have a feeling that there are a lot of people who were saying, oh no, it's at a bar at night. Why would I go to that? I'm freaking out. I feel anxious. And being a woman at a bar is already a task in and of itself. So going to mingle with mostly white men in an industry that creates content a lot of the time mostly for white men, it's really intimidating. And I was very, um, not shocked, but it, it just came over me one day when um, I didn't want to order something to drink and someone I was talking to was confused by it, that I confused people. <laughs> while I was there, and there must have been other people who felt confused as well. Obviously, um, being female is something that we're talking about a lot these days. There are a lot of issues coming up with feminism in the game industry. And it was obvious to me two years ago doing this study, there were very few women there, and they were mostly white. Um, one thing that I, I remember happening to me is talking to this really 
inspired, lovely black woman who came to a Boston Indies event, and there she was at the back of the room with me. I was in the back of the room to do research so I could watch. But there she was, and I asked her how she was doing, and she's like, I feel a little awkward. And I wondered, I also felt awkward, so there must have been other people like me who feel awkward being in that situation. And why? Part of it might have been, I don't know for her, but it might have been the fact that she stuck out too. And we had a great conversation, but as I go to my next point, she did not attend any other event again. I never saw her again or heard about her again because I noticed that people of color are not repeat attendees. I see them once, I don't see them again. They don't come back. And why? There must be a reason for that too. It can't be that um, the content of the talks were alienating, or they might have been, but maybe the crowd was. And I already had felt it kind of in my stomach already. I feel weird being here. And to be honest, would I have come back to an event at a bar? I don't know. But that could just be me. But I said all of this is through my very, very subjective lens, but I feel like I can't be the only one seeing that there were mostly white men every single time. Another thing that I want to talk about is that half of the time, and I remember actually counting and realizing it was exactly 50% of the events I went to, when there was a person of color there, a white dude made a comment, to be completely frank. Um, for example, there were three young Asian women attending a Boston Unity Group, and uh, they were sitting together, and two men sitting behind me uh, said something like, ooh, Asian invasion. And I was, I'm Asian too, <laughs> and, but I'm not East Asian, but I felt so weird hearing that. And it was the first thing I ever heard. And those girls heard and turned around, do you think I saw them again? Um, I'm not sure, again, I don't know exactly why they weren't there again. But obviously hearing these kinds of things, and as I said, half of the time, someone mentioned, oh, look, a black dude for once. I mean, if you hear that as a minority, you're being singled out as the sore thumb. It is not a comfortable situation to be in. But as I'm saying, these were all observations. These were all generalized accounts. I couldn't pick up on every single thing that was in the room. I couldn't pick up on what every single person was feeling. And a lot of the time, it is based more on assumption. So I do need to talk also about interviews. I did in-depth interviews with individuals and with couples, not necessarily romantically involved couples, but maybe work uh, co-workers. Um, and um, there are certain things that I noticed. And this brings me to the point of innovation. Yes, there is a problem with the demographic, but there's also a problem, a worry that I saw within interviews. Interviews are so much more intimate, so I can find out so much more about a person and an indie and what an indie wants through talking to them directly. One of the hugest things I noticed is that AAA studios were criticized at every turn with the people who I talked to. They didn't want to be cogs in a machine. They didn't want to be a unit in a whole. They wanted to be the whole. And I understand that completely. As individualistic as it is, I totally get that they want to have full creative control over what they do. But there, you know, in doing so, they wanted to create things that were very different and new and fresh, but they were worried because all that most people were rec recounting was that there was a rehashing just over and over, making games that were throwbacks to childhood and throwbacks to things that they liked. And only, uh, as one of my interviewees said, it is only the technology that grows. The subject matter and the content is staying the same in this community, and I'm tired. I remember him saying that he was tired. And looking at the games that were being made at the time and looking at some indie games that are on, for example, for like Greenlight, I kind of get what he was saying. I kind of get what these indies were talking about. So they have all these worries about stagnancy and games being the same and games not pushing the limit and us having the same content over and over. And immediately, in my mind, it was, well, yeah, you're a bunch of white bros. Like, you're going to make the same stuff, aren't you? But 
But I didn't, I mean, obviously some of them were really trying to push it, but not exactly knowing where to go with it. Like, how should they push the boundaries? And they asked these questions to themselves within the interview, um, and they did not connect it to race. They did not connect it to gender. And so there's a lot of th there's a lot of talk going on in social media about the need for diversity, the need for diversity. And I'm not I mean, from the interviews that I did. I'm not sure that the indies I spoke to completely understood what it meant to to include people and what it meant to give them a voice. I want to say um, every indie that I spoke to that I asked, um, there are a lot. You know, I would ask something like, you know, what do you think about the makeup? of indies, um, what would you like to see more of? And they always would say something like, oh, there are not enough women, um, there aren't enough um, people of color, um, but they, would, they, they knew the problem, but they didn't fully understand what to do about it. Um, and then uh, I do want to say that no indie showed overt racism or sexism in my presence. Um, I never had a situation where um, a group was uh, discriminated against or something nasty was said about them. However, since I mentioned some of the things I saw during observations, there may be things that are more subtle that are innocently done, but they are done. And it is exclusionary. Um, I do also need to mention that um, w besides you know, women feeling safe in the spaces where indies are meeting up, uh, I did get um, detailed accounts of sexism and sexual harassment in this community, in the Boston Indies community. And although I did not, um, I was not subject to that, I feel like it's important to point out. Um, these things are happening, and they have happened, and they happen in the workplace as well as at events. And that was really shocking and really saddening to me. But it just says that, that things, uh, people aren't really talking enough about them. And even to this day, I feel like it's kind of a very difficult subject to broach, even though there is a lot of social media work being done about it. Um, so just to be brief about my conclusions, indies care about the games they make. The games they make reflect who they are, whether it's based on mechanic or based on art or based on narrative. They care about what they're doing. Secondly, they are really, really worried about this demographic problem most of the time. They just don't know how to talk about it or what to do, from what I've seen. Um, secondly, you know, secondly, no, not at all. Thirdly, <laughs> indies want to make better games. They do want to see things, they want to see things freshen up. They do, they don't want to see things rehashed over and over. To me, it's very obvious, but I'm going to say it again. Having diverse minds means diverse thought patterns, means diverse knowledge bases. And that will, to me, mean diverse games. Of course, if we, we need to have a balance of different types of people if we're hoping to sort of qualm these worries. I truly believe that as indies become more introspective, as these questions are being asked, as the articles are being written, as the tweets are being retweeted, people will become more culturally sensitive. And hopefully, hopefully the ones that don't care about cultural sensitivity will get the hell out. I really hope for that. Um, because the more solidarity we show with people who are different than us, the more welcome they might feel. So there's a lot of work ahead, but I truly believe that Indies have a good spirit. I do believe that they have the best intentions at heart most of the time. However, there is so much to be done. All right, thank you so much, everybody. I had a great time. <laughs>